Great. So I'm kicking it off talking about Adobe Experience Manager. Um, and starting off, um, there are a couple of core benefits to Adobe Experience Manager and why somebody might choose this over um, another option. And those are things like it integrates with um, Adobe's other cloud offerings, things like Creative, Analytics, and Target. Um, it allows content to be con uh, published across multiple channels. So that's um, in addition to a web experience, things like native apps, voice apps, um, IoT devices, even things like chat. Um, so a really broad range of uh, channels. Um, it's a WYSIWYG drag and drop interface that's really simple for a lot of content authors. So it's also just um, in terms of usability, pretty easy for page authors. Um, and then going into who uses it. So I've collected some example sites and you can see it's really um, used by a broad range of companies like really across industries. So a few of the samples I have here are Airbus, the London Telegraph, Sydney Opera House, University of Michigan and MasterCard. Um, and then Adobe on their site has um, a really broad range of case studies um, that will go into depth over who's using Adobe Experience Manager, what their reasons are, and maybe like also what other um, Adobe offerings they're mixing with it and that how that kind of um, helps their web experience or um, helps them build out a really effective um, Adobe Experience Manager um, experience. And when I talk about Adobe Experience Manager, it's actually an umbrella term for five separate offerings. Um, AEM Sites is the CMS part. It's that drag and drop um, capabilities to manage um, things across platforms, which is probably what you were thinking of when I started this pre presentation on AEM. But then there are other parts as well, like AEM Assets, which is an asset manager. Um, and this does things like integrate with Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, it has a workflow for review and approval of assets, um, kind of easing that process. And then also does some interesting things like allow you to upload one high res image and then it will help you kind of crop and size um, for, for um, multiple channels. So it really kind of takes uh, some of that workflow away. Um, things like AEM forms, which create smart forms. Um, it will do things like save a partially completed form and allow a user to pick up, pick, uh, pick up that form at a later time. Um, and then can also like save that data to a, a secure user portal for that user. Um, another, another part of AEM is AEM apps. This is really focused on um, native mobile applications. Um, and it, it gives, it gives um, content creators the same authoring environment that it would for the web experience, but for apps. Um, and can also save a little time because um, you can update content without going through um, a, develop process, a development process and redeployment for apps. Um, and then the last part is AEM communities, um, which allows kind of uh, somebody to create and manage blogs, forums, reviews, any of that kind of thing. Um, it, it's kind of what allows AEM to incorporate things like a Twitter feed. Um, so five, five offerings really make up AEM, but this, this presentation will really focus on AEM sites, the CMS part. Um, and I mentioned that AEM really gets more powerful with um, integrations into Adobe's other offerings. And a few examples of how that really plays out is um, with Adobe CC, you can do things like edit an image in Photoshop and have that sync directly um, directly up to AEM and you can do things like manage versions and then easily edit and publish um, back and forth. Um, if you're using Adobe Analytics, you have the ability to um, use data on your site to really help optimize it, behavioral and actual data. And if you're using Target, um, you can do content targeting and really create personalized web experiences. Um, so those are just a few ways that some of these other offerings really make AEM more powerful. Um, and then diving into AEM as a, as a CMS and really what kind of a CMS it is, it's a hybrid CMS. Um, so it's different than like a, words, a, a WordPress or a Squarespace where content is coupled to the templates that it's authored in. Um, in AEM as a hybrid CAS, content can be decoupled from the actual structure. Um, but it still offers um, the, the ability to use templates to help structure and publish content. Um, but because it's decoupled, this makes it easier to publish across multiple channels. Um, and I'll, I'll explain how that really works. And really, 
Um, the way content is decoupled is through these things called content fragments, which are pieces of text or images that are authored independently of a template. So instead of um, adding this content into a page template, you create it in a separate environment. And on the right, I'm really showing how that workflow happens. Um, that top image is your asset manager. So you can see there's a longer form text article being stored alongside the images. So it's not in a template. It has its own editor that's um, separate from a template. So you do all your editing there and then you later publish it to a page template. Um, and there are certain advantages to this. As I said, it allows for publishing across uh, multi-channel. Um, but there's also some other things you can do with it, like create master versions um, and kind of version out content pretty easily across different parts of, of your app and even do things like um, if you wanted that longer form story to be um, long form on desktop and then create a shorter version, kind of like a summary of that content on mobile, you can also do that. Um, similar to content fragments or experience fragments, um, except these experience fragments have a little bit more structure. So they do come in with some structure applied, but they're still kind of independent of page templates. Um, and these are most commonly used for um, duplicating content, maybe across a web experience um, and a native application. So um, I mentioned that content can create, be created independent of templates, but templates are still a big part of um, AEM. Um, templates are built um, in HTL, which is an HTML uh, templating language, and they still get styled with custom CSS. So there's a lot of freedom to um, configure these templates any way we want. Um, and then templates are, are made up of um, components. Um, and then there's a lot of um, flexibility too in um, the components that we um, build these templates out of and how much flexibility we're giving to the page author that's actually going in and adding content to these templates. Um, so I'll talk about the role of a special user, a super user called the template author. That's kind of between a dev and a page author that would just be adding content. Um, so a template author is after a dev has kind of created the structure and coded components, a template author um, is a super user that can go into the GUI for each template um, and really enable and disable certain components. Um, and they also have the ability to either um, leave the page author who would be adding that content with a very flexible template where they can add and configure components as they wish, or a very kind of rigidly defined um, template where there's a lot of control over what's al already there um, and doesn't leave the page author with a lot of flexibility about what they can do. Um, so a little bit more about authoring in AEM. As I mentioned um, in the beginning, it's um, an in-place edit experience. So on the right, we're, we're seeing um, what, what that actually looks like. You kind of get a, um, a, a visual representation of the web page, and you'll actually hover over areas. And if it's editable, it'll get highlighted in blue. So we can see that join our community uh, title is editable. So our user can click into that and just replace the text. Um, and then, Explaining how it, like this could be a more rigid where maybe we're only, only allowing the page author to edit the title there, or they can have a lot more flexibility and that comes through a thing called paragraph systems. So now on the right, you can see um, we get that blue box with an outline and it says drag components here. And that means that this page author has a lot of flexibility over what they, what they want there. They can drag in a carousel, they can drag in text, um, they can drag in and configure that area however they want. Um, and then that area on the left, that sidebar is showing them all the components that they'd be able to drag in. And those are components that the template author has turned on for them. So the template author gets to choose which components are available for this template um, and allows the page author to configure that. Um, there's an even more flexible version of a paragraph system called um, a layout container. And that allows the page author to not only drag over components, but start to um, define a layout, a multi-column layout, um, and really, really kind of um, tailor that content as they need. Um, and as I mentioned, the template author really has a lot of control over what 
uh, they make available to a page author that's actually adding the content and they can really at a component level go in um, and really granularly define what they're going to enable um, a page author to edit or not edit. So I'm showing here the um, options for editing an image. So you can restrict that to like certain aspect ratios. Um, this is valuable for things like text. You can kind of define what properties are available if, if you want to allow uh, page authors to align text, if you want to limit them to just um, certain heading styles and things like that. So you can either give them a broad range of control or a very narrow range of control. Um, and then components. So components are really the base of templates. Um, and AEM comes with a bunch of out of the box components that I'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Um, but then it's still open for developers to add new components as they see fit. Um, and they can modify and extend any of the components that come out of the box with AEM. And then this is just um, AEM groups those components that it gives out of the box into component groups. So there's a general, general one with things like um, carousels, slideshows, even things like tag clouds. Quite a few components come with AEM out of the box. Um, it gives some column components for creating two, two column layouts, three column layouts, or multi-column layouts. Um, and then uh, components specific to forms. Um, so things like uh, a file upload, um, radio buttons, all come baked into AEM. Um, and then lastly, um, in terms of components, components for AEM really means functionality. Um, and then styling is on top of that. So they give um, the ability for page editors to um, toggle styles on and off if developers um, have created different visual styles. And I'm showing that on the right. Um, you can see we're editing that, that title at the top. Um, and then through a drop down, you can apply a different styling. So there could be multiple different styles to choose from. So also quite a bit of flexibility in terms of visual styling for components in AEM. Um, and then just leaving on some resources, um, some resources that I've looked at to um, put this presentation together. Um, and then uh, Adobe also has extensive documentation on AEM and a reference impl implementation, which is this we we retail project, um, the, the web page I'm showing on the right, where you can really, um, I think, fork their code um, and go through some tutorials on AEM. All right, that's, that's the presentation.